Okay, the title is a bit more clickbaity than I usually like, but you're here now, and I'm glad you are, because I think we just got to talk about something, and that's modularity. Let me just say that if modularity works and is implemented well, I think it could be one of the best low-key, didn't know you needed it so much until you had it features of the game. But that's a big if, with an awful lot of unknown ground to cover. What I'm not so worried about personally is just the fact that there's more concept ships. Uh, this doesn't worry me too much, although I can understand why it might be a bit frustrating considering there's already a bunch of concepts in the pipeline. But I'm going to go through both of these topics, so if this sounds good to you, then grab yourself a cup of tea while I roll the intro, and then let's get into it. So the RSI Galaxy has been teased in ISC, and I have to admit it does look fantastic to me. A friend of mine who's a little on the piracy side instantly sent me over this picture of the ship scooping those saddlebags off a prospector for refining, and yep, yeah, I've got to admit, it does seem right up my street. But I'm actually glad that this ship got a feature in ISC a good two days before it goes on sale, because for now at least, my bank balance is safe. Whatever price the Galaxy comes in at later today, I've decided already that it's not for me. The reason for that reticence on whether or not to even get excited about this ship, both from a long-term gameplay theory crafting perspective and from the view of a potential buyer, is the ship's proposed use of modules. The ship team outlined three modules that can be switched out on the galaxy, that give the ability to act as a refinery for mining and I assume salvage operations, as a more advanced medical support ship, and as a cargo hauler. On the surface this is a brilliant idea and great for players. Personally I wish that more ships in the SC universe were modular, it always felt a little bit weird to me that slight variations on a theme within the same chassis line got released as an entirely independent model. Let's take the Cutlass series from Jake for example. The black, red, blue and internal shudder, steel, are on the same chassis, just with a different utilisation of the interior and some minor exterior changes. So if I've decided that I'm a hardcore Cutlass till I die type, then to get the four game loops in the vehicle I like, I have to buy a Cutlass chassis four times. And why does an Avenger fan have to buy the chassis, components and weapons three times just in order to change what's in the trunk? At least the cutty red and blue get a paint job and some extra flashy lights. The Galaxy on the other hand, like every other modular ship, does something which I think is really healthy. It allows players to buy for cash or for in-game currency once it releases, this isn't just about why I'm not excited to buy one for USD yet, one hull. Much like a Swiss army knife, this should allow you to set out with one tool and tackle a variety of game loops. This matters from a cost perspective, not only in terms of buying the ship for credits or cash, but also in terms of equipping and maintaining it in the long term. We know there are going to be overheads to factor in within the game, insurance being just one, and wouldn't it be better to buy just the one super fast QT drive rather than three of them for your different variants? Not only is this potentially more practical and more cost effective, but it also allows for something a little less tangible. It encourages players and their crews to gel more with their ship, and put more millions of kilometres on the dial with it. I know I'm not the most RP guy out there, but even I enjoy that feeling of immersion. And there's something about SC with the full beautifully designed ship interiors that gives you the feeling that one day you could live out some of your sci-fi fantasies with your mates. And what does Star Trek, The Expanse, Firefly, Alien, etc, etc all have in common? The ship. Singular. The characters are tied together by their ship, they don't go and park the Enterprise and go get something a bit heavier out of the space station to go up against the Klingons. Han and Chewie don't switch the Millennium Falcon for something more niche when it was called for. They made their ship work for whatever it was they were doing. So wait, I hear you ask. You love modularity, but you're not excited about the galaxy because of modularity. Make some sense loud or I'm going to switch off. So the problem as I see it is quite a simple one. I can't get hyped up about modularity yet because there are too many massive gaps in the information. We've got quite a long list of ships where key selling points are focused around modularity. The Carrick, the Endeavour, the Caterpillar, the Apollo, the Retaliator, even the Hornet as I was reminded earlier this week in Discord. 
but we don't know very much about how CRG envisage modularity working in the game. Will we need to visit an in-game location like a shipyard to change out modules? And if so, how common are these locations going to be? Will there be a way to refit on the move with the help of other ships? What sort of time will it take to change out a module? Are we talking minutes, hours, days? Can we transport modules using cargo ships? Will modules be insured and are they going to be easily replaced? I'd imagine there could be more questions that could be asked here, and I understand that CIG's answers right this second are unlikely to be anywhere near definitive. I don't expect them to have full intricately crafted game systems yet, but I do think that if we're meant to speculate on the potential value of one modular ship over multiple dedicated ones, then I personally need at least some guidance to act as my inputs. In ISC, Mark Gibson hinted that the designers are getting close to being able to implement modularity, so I really hope that some questions around it get asked and answered as part of the RSI Galaxy Q&A. Because I do think these are critical, not only for this particular ship, but also for a host of others that we're waiting on. And part of that is down to us as a community. Only a limited amount of questions get answered as a part of a Q&A, and it's a little bit perplexing when a number of them that do could easily have their answers copy-pasted from ship brochures and ISCs. One of the best Q&As recently was the Cargo Refactor one, and honestly, hats off to Dobbs & Co for asking well-thought-out questions that hadn't been answered anywhere else, and then brigading them to the top of the pile for us all to benefit from. But also it's on CRG themselves. We lack a way to downvote on Spectrum, so questions where the answers are already in the public realm can't be filtered out easily. Maybe those responding could leave a quick copy-paste comment that the info is already available and just move on. Better still though would be seeing some modularity in action in the verse. During the ISC episode Physician Admission from August 2021, the team showed off some of their work that they'd been doing on the Retaliators modules. And even if it's just one relatively small ship like the Retaliator, a working example that can be iterated on while the game's in testing that can give us some idea of how modular ships are going to work going forward would help to act as a proof of concept for backers. Much like the 890 Jump and the Carrick work in the same way to prove that big ships can exist. I hope that goes some way to explaining why I personally won't be tempted to get my wallet out for an RSI Galaxy this afternoon. But just before I let you go about your day, and some of you to buy one anyway, I'd just like to chuck my two pennies in on a topic that I've seen a number of other SC content creators worrying about these last couple of days. The idea that CIG shouldn't be selling concept ships at all because there are so many ships in backlog. I'm sure you've already watched some of the same videos, I don't expect monogamy from you in this relationship, but just in case I am your one and only, the TLDR version of the issue is, Dear CRG, please finish what's on your plate before you go back for more. My numbers might be a tiny bit off, so if they are, either forgive me or correct me in the comments, ideally both, but by my count there were 171 ships in Star Citizen coming into IAE. And if we add the Drake Cutter, Anvil Pisces, CHR, and now the RSI Galaxy, we're at 174. 38 of these ships, including the Galaxy, are yet to be flyable. So when you already had 37 bits of work to complete, why did you add 3 more and finish 2 of them before you finish something that people have been waiting on for potentially years? And with news of the Banu Merchantmen getting put on hold, why are you releasing more big ships like the Galaxy? The slightly cynical, but of course to some extent true answer why is, of course, capitalism. CIG have to keep raising money to keep making the game. But why am I personally not mad about this? Uh, why am I not worried that SC will never release because of this backlog of ships? And just before anyone says it's because I was smart and followed my own advice and only own a starter pack, I do own a couple of concepts, so it's not Schadenfreude. Sorry to my German friends for that, that was probably terrible pronunciation. I think it's because I don't think every ship needs to be out for the game to go to a version 1.0. Right now ships are not holding back Star Citizen's progression. The transition of ships through the pipeline is not the bottleneck. And ships, while they are great to look at and a strong element of content, are not the game. The game is the core tech like server meshing, it's the economy systems like Quanta, it's gameplay loops like piracy and salvage, it's AI and NPCs, it's other content like new systems to explore and new materials to mine. It would of course always be nicer for everything to go a bit faster. There's some understandable frustration that Squadron 42, a game that a big slice of us are not that interested in, is taking priority over the MMOPU that we did come for. But I personally see enough progress and content coming online to keep me interested in this project. 
If SC has a long pipeline of ships, that's not a bad thing, really. For my sins, one of my favourite games for the last 13 years has been League of Legends. I started playing in the beta, and when the game went live in 2009, it had 40 champions. How has it survived for more than a decade and continued to be popular? Well, one, they kept adding content in the form of new champions, and they're now on more than 140. But secondly, objectively, they made a really good game. I'm not saying it has to be your cup of tea, but a game that still has 150 million monthly players, a huge esports scene, and equal parts makes you want to hug and murder your best mates must be doing something right. So over time, as core tech and systems in Starset are fleshed out, it's going to be over to other teams to carry more of the weight for the game. The continuous development and creation of new content is going to become more important as other bottlenecks to the game's success are removed. At the point when content is carrying the weight, and when funding is more secure than the model we have today, surely CIG will look to increase the size of the ship teams, bringing more designers and artists in to complete the backlog and work on new ships and features to continue expanding the verse. I think maybe the issue I have with the argument being made is that it extrapolates a linear progression of ship development, and a single statement from John Crew about cap ships taking a year to make. None of that accounts for CIG's ability to be dynamic when it comes to team sizing, and it also doesn't allow for the fact that ships are built with shared assets. So even seemingly tiny elements like the lever system on the lift of the Corsair can cut time off a huge project like the Kraken as you recycle them. I hope this was an interesting video and wasn't too much of a random ramble. If you think I earned it, then consider dropping a like and subscribe for more things SC. And never forget amongst all this talk of ships for cash that you just don't need to get that deep into the fleet building side of Star Citizen. The smartest folks in the room are those with a starter ship and nothing else in their hangar. And if you're scratching your head watching from the sidelines because you haven't jumped into SC, then I can wholeheartedly recommend that you take advantage of the free fly to see if you enjoy the game. And just work out whether it's for you in its current state as it is now. And then I can also recommend a Drake Cutter, which is currently $45 as a game pack. To me this offers one of the best routes into the game and it's 100% complete and usable today. Take a look at my starter ship guide, which I'll link in the vid description for a full rundown of what you could choose from. If you do decide to create an account, just make sure you use a referral code. Mine's the one up on screen, but if you've got any friends who play, please use theirs. And with all that said, thank you very much for watching all the way to the end, and I look forward to seeing you next time.